We have two certified organic farmers on Martha's Vineyard. They are Lisa Stoddard and Eric Glasgow at the Gray Barn. And so I'd like Eric to come up and just talk for a few minutes about um, sourcing his pro products and any other thing that you want to share with us. Thank you, Eric. Is that, is that coming through? Um, so as Jan said, we're, we're a certified organic farm, and hopefully everybody in the room realizes that to be certified organic, by definition, means that you use non-GMO seed and non-GMO feed. Um, all of the, uh, we, we don't, uh, generally speaking, we're not actually certified as a, for our vegetables, although we manage it that way. We just don't sell very many vegetables. It's only for personal use. But all of the feed, sorry, um, all of the feed that goes into our animals um, is certified organic and non-GMO. Uh, different people make the choice to be certified organic for a whole variety of reasons. Um, for us, the, the GMO argument only is a, a part of it. Um, as Carol said, you know, organics prohibits the use of synthetic herbicides synthetic pesticides, synthetic fertilizers. Um, there's no use of antibiotics to promote growth. There's actually no use of antibiotics in general unless it's a, you know, it, it imp impacts the organic status of your animals. Um, what it boils down to is it's, um, it, it is a system that sort of necessitates in um, building a healthy ecosystem, healthy soil, something that is fundamentally sustainable, um, which is why we chose to be that way. We are, at our heart, a, um, a wholesale cheese company. So the vast majority of what we do really leaves the island, for better or for worse. And that organic label allows us, uh, you know, many local farmers don't necessarily, although they may practice in many senses, they, they, they follow organic practices. They don't need to go through the paperwork or the hassle, which is not insignificant of certifying because they're, they very much are, exist in the world where they know their customers and it's, it's not critical. For us, in as much as so much as what we do leaves the island, it's something that conveys a lot. And interestingly enough, organic dairy is really big, but in the world of artisanal cheese making, actually very, there's very few organic cheeses. And, and this is something that's starting to become a really interesting issue, driven in large part by Whole Foods announcing their, uh, independent of what the state laws are doing and what states are doing, they have a GMO labeling initiative. Um, many of you may or may not know that even the past law in Vermont and the other provisionally passed things, those GMO labeling laws only apply to packaged food. So it's never going. It, it won't be on dairy or meat or any of those products if they basically come from you know if those were cows that were fed GMO corn, be it for dairy or for meat production. Um, so even if there's a even if you see the the labeling initiative kind of, or at least this is my understanding, even if the labeling initiative sort of gathers some steam it's still only going to affect the packaged food world as opposed to some of these other things that we, that, you know, that we take in, um, which I think is an interesting thing, and there's a lot of politics involved in that, why that's the case. You know, for us, obviously, the, the simplest thing, if you want to avoid GMO, is to, you know, eat organic. For, uh, uh, you know, that, that's the easiest answer. There seem to be numerous things going on and different certifiers or different protocols for people coming up to start to come with GMO labeling. Um, GMO labeling, I'd also make a point, it's, it's kind of a proxy fight for small agriculture versus big agriculture, in my, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of other stuff that gets tied up in that. Um, it, it becomes this sort of um, issue that I think has a lot of other pieces involved in it. It, it. It's a little bit, sometimes I think it can be oversimplified. Um, and there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a you know, difference between, within the organic community, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of uh, pushback between what you would call big organic, you know, the earthbound farms, the giant farms out in California and other places versus 
small family farm scale vegetable farmers or dairies or something and what what is or is not um, you know natural or, or what people are trying to preserve um, speaking for myself I, I would say that I'm not opposed to GMO as a matter of principle but more as a function of what it represents so what you get is is, is you you modify a crop so you can spray it full of glyphosate glyphosate so i don't really want to eat a bunch of food that's been soaked in glyphosate i don't necessarily um have a huge issue with the the lack of you know that the, the modification is a problem you know there are lots of you know you can make an argument that you know through traditional seed breeding we, we've over the years done a lot of modifications and some of the things they're done they've done are, are just an extension of that. And I think that it's important to draw a distinction between, say, um, there's something like golden rice, which is a genetically modified crop, um, but it was done, for those who don't know, it was done to basically address vitamin A deficiency in the third world. It was developed not by the, um, not by the major chemical companies, but rather by an academic consortium. And you know, that's something that actually has faced a lot of resistance in areas of the world where it might be a benefit. Um, I don't want to reflexively reject the science. I think that a lot of people in this room would probably be like really doubting the science. And I think that this is, you know, I think what was it last month there was an article in National Geographic on the cover about, you know, this pervasive attitude of, of people doubting science. I think people in this room might be really upset, might, might really look at somebody who said they don't believe the science of climate change and say that you're crazy. How can you not believe it? Whereas there are some who, uh, doubt climate change, you might look at people and say, I can't believe you think, how can you think that GMOs aren't safe? Science has said that they're safe. So we all have a tendency to want to take the various facts and so forth as, as, we, as we want to fit them to our own worldview, um, which I think is a little bit dangerous. I, I think that the, the danger in GMO is in the, you know, in the fact that it represents and supports a, seri uh, you know, a system of industrial big agriculture that I think is really damaging and that it is a non-sustainable system. And to the extent that GMO is, is part of that system, I'm opposed to it. But I think we should be careful to not be opposed to it for it on, on its own, like that we're making some Frankenstein-y things. And I would also draw the distinction between, yeah, some of the transgenic stuff or, or different things, you know, what is or what isn't bad or where, where is it? And, and obviously there need to be rules and they should be appropriate about the degree to which these things need to be tested and so forth. But it, it is a complicated issue. Um, and I don't think I would be, um, you know, I don't want to be, I think being sort of uh, having the sort of Luddite, I'm opposed to it all the time always is a dangerous place. And I think it, it risks to, to have that attitude risks becoming marginalized or having the, you know, having the, the sort of mainstream sort of say, well, this is kooky, you know, these people are just crazy, they're opposed to all progress or so forth. And so that's sort of my take on GMOs, which maybe is not everybody's take on it, but I, I think that that's why I would want to be, you know, opposed, you know, or, or want to be, I think that's why labeling is great for that reason, and, and I think that if people know, then in that, in that sense, what they can do is, is you can allow the market forces to act, right? And then at the end of the day, it's the profit motive that makes everything sort of go, and if people don't want to buy it, or they, uh, you know, act with their pocketbooks and understand it, then, you know, that's that. So I think that's that. <laughs>